This lesson is not anything new. It's just taking all of the different types of factoring that we've done and putting more than one method in one question. It's called factoring completely. And when you do any type of factoring, especially if the directions say completely, but in general, just any type of factoring, you should always look for multiple types of factoring. So the first type of factoring we're going to refresh ourselves on is what we call factoring by grouping. And we did this when we were doing our one where the A value in a trinomial was greater than one, when we did the technique when we had to split the middle. To factor a polynomial when there's four terms, you're gonna group the terms into pairs and then factor out the GCF of each pair. Once you factor out the GCF of each pair, you should see a common binomial factor and that's called factoring by grouping. So, so let's look at some that are specifically designed for factor by grouping. I see that this polynomial in letter A has four terms, so I'm gonna look for factor by grouping. I'm gonna divide the first two terms by x squared, because that's their GCF, and when I do that, I'll get x squared times x plus three. Now I go to the second pair, and I recognize that their fa uh, common factor is 2. So I have to write plus 2. Don't just write 2, because then that just looks weird. There's no symbol in front of the 2. So plus 2. And then times. You should get x plus 3. You want to get that same binomial. So you just say, do I get x plus 3? Don't just write it down, and you'll, I'll explain why in letter B but you have to actually look for it. Now that you do, you're ready to write the two terms. So x squared plus 2 is one of the bubbles, and then x plus 3 is the other. Again, you should foil or box this out to make sure that you get it right, but let's move on. If you go to factor letter B right now, you can't. It doesn't work using this technique. You wouldn't get the same binomial factors like we did over here. So that's why I always say you want to make sure that you actually are, are doing it, not just writing it down because you know that that's what you should get. And the reason that it doesn't work is because it's not in standard form. When this polynomial is in standard form, it will work. I know we haven't really talked specifically about standard form, um, in the last couple of lessons, but you should always put your polynomials in standard form. So first thing is I'm going to rewrite it, x cubed plus, uh, minus x squared plus 7x minus 7. Now that it's in standard form, it's factorable using this technique, and I'd like you to pause the video now and try letter B and C on your own. The tricky thing that happens here in choice C, or letter C, sorry, not a choice, um, in letter C is that you get x plus 1, and then over here you get 1 plus x. So it's kind of a little different, but you know addition is commutative, so x plus 1 is the same thing as 1 plus x, and it doesn't matter how you write it, but you should typically put the variable first when you have a variable and a constant, so I wrote it as x plus 1. Regardless, when you FOIL it out, you'll get the same thing, so it doesn't matter which um, polynomial or which binomial you write first. If it were x minus 1 and 1 minus x, those are not the same because we know subtraction is not commutative. So um, it works in this case, but subtraction, just be careful, that would not be able to be easily switched like we just did. In example 2, we're now going to use our technique for factoring completely, which means we're going to look for multiple techniques. And one of the techniques that we talked about was GCF, and you should always check for GCF first. That will always make the polynomial look simpler to deal with. So probably something worth annotating, highlighting, capital letters, stars around it, something. Always check for GCF first. So in that case, the first thing I want to check for in letter A is a GCF, and it's 3x. Remember, you look for constants and variables. So when I pull out 3x, I get x squared, then I would get minus 6x, and then plus 8. Now I have a trinomial, 
and I want to check for trinomial factoring. So there are two things. One is you could just go straight to a times c and use that um, splitting the middle technique. But since the coefficient in front of the x squared is 1, you can just go straight to the double bubble. And again, if you're not really sure what I'm doing right now, go back to lesson 7.7 .7 and look at the trinomial factoring technique. So I'll go straight to the double bubble, and I'm looking for pairs of 8 that give me negative 6. So I'm experienced enough at this point, that's going to be x minus 4, x minus 2. And don't forget to bring that 3x back out front. When you go to check this, if you go to check this when you're on your own, the, you want to do it backwards. So the first thing you would do would be to FOIL the binomials, and then you'd bring in the 3x. You don't, you're not distributing 3x to every single term. That is not how you will multiply. You multiply two pieces at a time. So you could start with the two binomials and then multiply by 3x, or you could multiply these two things, and then you'd get a binomial, and then you'd FOIL that, but you only go two at a time when you're checking. You only distribute over addition, not multiplication. All right, let's try example B. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a GCF, and it's 7x squared. Typically, if the directions say factor completely, they're giving you a hint that there's more than one technique to use. So I'll pull out 7x squared, and then I get x squared um, minus 4. Ooh, that's a binomial. So I'm going to check for dots, right, difference of two squares. So it's a binomial. It's a subtraction. And each piece is a perfect square because this is x times x, and this is 2 times 2. So the answer to, or the factored form of that difference of two squares is x plus 2, x minus 2. And then again, don't forget to bring the 7x squared back out front. If you were checking this, first thing I would encourage you to do would be to multiply these binomials and then take that answer and multiply by 7x squared. Now we go to letter C, and it's just a simple trinomial. So first thing I want to look for is what? Good, GCF. And there isn't one because these two terms would have a GCF of uh, 2, but this doesn't have a GCF of 2. There's nothing I could divide by. These two terms have a GCF of P, but this doesn't have any variables, so I can't divide by P. So there's no GCF. So sometimes, no GCF. Whatever, you move on. It's a trinomial, so the next technique that I look for is the trinomial factoring. And since the A value is 1, I can go straight to the double bubble. So I'll pull out factor pairs of negative 2. So that's 1, negative 2 and negative 1, 2. Those are my only factor pairs. Now I want to look for the pair that adds to positive 4, and you can see that there isn't one. So we had one example like this before, and it, like I said, it doesn't happen that often, but remember the answer to this would be not factorable. So this is one of those like tricky questions that they put in. Um, in order to get the values for P, you would have to use a technique that we're going to learn in Chapter 9, because Chapter 9 we're going to look at these polynomials and how to solve them if they're not factorable. All right, last one. Let's check out number three. Now, we talked about the difference in directions here. This says solve, so we're going to go beyond factoring. But remember, to solve, we have to make it equal zero. And right now, it doesn't. So you can move your terms to either side. It does not matter. You can either take both of these terms and move them to the right, or take this term and move it to the left. Obviously, the easier one would be to move this to the left. And also, you want your leading coefficient to be positive. It's always much easier to deal with coefficients that are positive. So since this would be the leading coefficient, because that has the highest degree, I'm going to keep it positive by keeping it on the left and moving everything to the left. So that's also helpful as well. So I will subtract 10x, and my new polynomial is 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 10x equals 0. You want to try to keep it in standard form 
because like we saw a couple of minutes ago, it's much more helpful to factor polynomials when they're in standard form. What do you always check for? Good GCF. So GCF here is going to be 2x. So I've got 2x times x squared plus 4x minus 5. Don't forget, equals 0. All right, I'm just going to write it up here because I'm running out of space. Whoops. Plus, whoops, minus 5 equals 0. Okay. I can't do the zero product property right now because I'm not done factoring. Remember, I still have a trinomial, so you want to look for trinomial factoring. So uh, the leading coefficient is 1, so I can just go straight to my bubbles. And in order to multiply to negative 5 and add to positive 4, it's plus 5 minus 1. Don't forget to bring down the 2x and the equals 0. Now that it's as low as I can go, I drop lines down the factors, and I see what my values are. So one possibility is that 2x equals 0. The other possibility is that x plus 5 equals 0. Uh, x minus 1 could equal 0. So one possible answer is that x is 0. The other possibility is that x equals negative 5 or x equals positive 1. So there are three answers. And a way that you can keep track of the quantity of answers, and there are a couple exceptions which you'll learn about when you talk about imaginary numbers in Algebra 2 and trigonometry, but one of the things that you want to go into the question expecting is that the highest exponent will tell you how many answers there are. Maybe you didn't recognize that when we were doing our quadratics, but anytime we had a degree of 2, we had two answers. If you have a degree of 3, you have three answers. This has two answers, but they're just not solvable in the factoring technique. There are other ways to get them. So you might not get all of the answers using factoring, but they're there. So I know I'm looking for three answers here because the highest exponent was three. So I know that going in. So if I only got these two, then I might want to reconsider my technique or just double check and make sure I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.